O'Reilly and O'Reilly's Classroom. Um, my name is Michael Ross, and as you know, um, George Crawford and I have been walking across the country for 186 days now. Started in Danbury, Connecticut, April 21st, and we're making our way to Huntington Beach, California, where we should be in January. Uh, right now, we reside in La Junta, Colorado. It's been a pretty long time, so basically, you know, we decided to do this trip to better ourselves. We had both enlisted in the Marine Corps and decided, you know, what better way to spend the summer and winter waiting for our ship day. Get in shape, you know, meet some awesome people across the country. And we are walking for the Live Strong Foundation, raising money for cancer. And um, that's been going really well, you know, just telling people about what Live Strong does for people. Hey O'Reilly, this is George Leslie Crawford V coming at you from Colorado. Hope you're doing well. I miss spending time with you in the classroom and on the cross country field. Now I'm just going to answer some questions about my trip. Um, first one, why did it appeal to me? This trip was extremely appealing. Um, this was always my dream. I wanted to run across America actually, but I guess that's not going to happen. So here I am walking. And the biggest part of this trip that appealed to me was the freedom that it gives you. You can wake up every morning and your whole life's on your back and you decide where you go and who you meet and what you do that day. And it's really a great feeling to know that you're not constrained to this tight schedule. And that's been one of the most wonderful parts of this trip for me. We've learned a lot. I mean, we've stayed with all different types of people from all different walks of life. Um, I mean, everything from the, the, the kindest old ladies to the youngest, baddest drug dealers. I mean, really just crazy different types of people. But overall, through all the people that we have met, they've all been so kind. And that's something we didn't expect when we started this trip. I mean, we expected to sleep in ditches every night. We expected to eat the bare minimum. We, we thought people were honestly going to be mean to us. We thought cops would always pull us over and give us a problem. Then the complete opposite. Cops befriend us. People pull over all the time. They, they want to donate. They want to find out what we're doing. They offer us a place to sleep. Since Chicago all the way to Colorado, we have slept in a tent only six times. Um, the, the people we've met across this country have been absolutely amazing. And if there's anything I've learned from that, it's that, you know, it's 99% of people that are good and it's the 1% that you hear about that make you afraid to, to talk to strangers and to meet people you don't know. Um, you shouldn't be afraid. People are kind out there. I mean, especially as you get more west. People always say that people in the Midwest are kind. They're not lying. It is the truth. I mean, you, you, you cut someone off in the, in the grocery store and they say sorry to you and let you go. It's, it's weird. Everyone waves to you. Everyone says hello. It doesn't matter whether they know you or not. Um, people are just kind out here. Um, not to say people aren't kind on the East Coast, they are as well, but I, I feel like people are just more afraid out there. They're not as welcoming to you. So, um, what have I learned about people? They're kind. They're, they're just usually always kind, and if they're not, they probably have a good reason. Connecticut has trees and hills and forests and paths and where I am has paths but not many trees so it's pretty barren and that makes me sad um, but you know let's go back let's rewind let's rewind here I'm not here yet I started in Connecticut right went to New York New York still very treeish um, then I passed over the Appalachians which was absolutely wonderful I will one day go back there and travel them However, that is neither here nor there. Beautiful sights here, all the way at the top of the Appalachians. You can just look into the ravines and the canyons, and then all around you rises these massive hills. And it was very nice. And then you get over the Appalachians, you go into Pennsylvania. There's no straight way through Pennsylvania. It's very, very turny, turn, turn, turn. So it was, it was difficult to navigate our way through Pennsylvania. And then it was just a straightaway to Indianapolis, and we watched tons and tons of corn and other plant type things in fields growing and that was kinda cool you know we got to see them you know they were here and then they were here at some point eventually I think the saying is knee high by the fourth of July and then we went to Chicago now Chicago wasn't my cup of tea I'm not a big fan of big cities 
because it's just too busy and noisy and it smells funny and you know the the you gotta take the train and the bus everywhere and it's just and the people the homeless people are asking you for money the homeless people are asking you for money and I'd give them money but I don't know you know whether they threw away their lives on purpose or, or like they were really unfortunate but that's neither here nor there um, so we went down from Chicago through Illinois and Missouri and it was nice, you know, some more corn. Lots of corn, not so many trees. But then we hit Kansas, and Kansas is just dusty, and there's tumbleweed. And I mean, it's kind of cool. If I was dropped there one day while I was sitting in Connecticut, I'd be like, wow, this is cool, but mysterious. But you know, when you spend like a month walking through it, it's, it's so windy. There were like 60 mile per hour winds, and the trees were all bent and twisted and gnarled. and. You know, like like they've been fighting a long battle with the wind in their head. That's what happened. So we got out of Kansas, and now we're here in Colorado. Beautiful Colorado sign. Welcome to colorful Colorado. And immediately, it was a bit more colorful. And we have seen some wonderful canyons. But we're about to get into the greatest part of our trip, in my opinion, because we're going to walk into the mountains. And I've wanted to see the mountains this whole time. They're so beautiful. They're soaring, majestic, snowy peaks and you walk in through them and you wind and you twist and it's going to be great. Then we see the Grand Canyon and that's probably the part of the trip I'm most excited for. And then it's not over because we get to walk through the desert where my old hometown was. So, you know, still lots to see and we've seen a lot but it's mostly been in more populated areas. Now we're going to be in the middle of nowhere. So I'm looking forward to the next leg of the trip. And the last leg was pretty good. So, thank you very much. So there's a lot of different types of communities around the country. I mean, generally on the whole east side, it was just, you know, normal sized um, towns. A lot of small towns, I guess. But um, we've walked through many different communities, from big cities, small towns, to barren towns. And there's a big difference between all of them. Um, big cities, you know, when we walk around with our big flag and our backpacks, you know, we probably just look homeless to people. People don't really notice. Um, we don't really make any money um, for live strong in big cities. Small towns, small towns always get together. Almost every time we walk through one. Uh, within just a few hours, people will make some phone calls, find out where we're eating dinner, where we're having breakfast, where we're sleeping that night, uh, what to do while we're in town. It's quite amazing, like this, um, this one town, uh, Rushville, Illinois, where we walked through. I think that was the most supportive um, town we ever walked through. And there was, I don't even think, a couple thousand in that town. Very small. Um, I would say every five minutes someone would pull over and uh, want to take a picture with us and find out what we're doing. And we only made it six miles that day through that town because we, we had to talk to so many people. Um, our faces actually hurt from smiling so much in pictures. But it was amazing because we got to share um, about Live Strong and what they do to so many people. And I'm glad that we got to share that awareness. But. Um, then there's also barren towns where uh, we just walk for miles and see absolutely nothing. And people always ask us, you know, what, what do you do out there on the road? Um, do you get bored? What do you guys talk about? Um, we always kind of have something to talk about, to be honest. It's, it's surprising, but um, we're always talking about our day or something that's happened in our life. Just sharing things with each other. Um, but when it does get boring sometimes, we just put in our headphones and listen to music. And, um, I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it for communities, but, I mean, generally, since, um, Pennsylvania, I mean, it's pretty much been just small town after small town. There's a lot of small towns out here. It's not like Connecticut. Um, when you, we look back at Connecticut, it's like every town is right next to each other, and everywhere you go, there's houses. Everywhere that you go, there's houses or, or business or something. It's not like that out here. It's, it's everywhere you go, you have to go a mile to get to the store, um, uh, well, sometimes way more than a mile to get to the store. It's always like 15 miles to the next town. It's it's just a lot different out here. It's, um, it's a lot more barren. But it's nice. People are kind. It's all that matters to us. Hey guys, this is the end of the George series. Um, I'm just going to leave you with the thought that you should do good in your community. Now, I think in the future I will always be involved in some sort of altruistic charity program type thing 
something that helps somebody out because it really does make you feel good. And I didn't so much believe in the karma thing before this trip, but now I believe that you really do get like good karma. When you do something good for someone else, good things always come back to you. And I found that to be very true on this trip. And get yourself involved. Somehow, it makes you feel good, it helps somebody else. All right. What's truly amazing to me is that before this trip, I could not run a mile. I, um, I sat on the couch most days, just ate food and watched TV. I was very lazy once I got out of high school. I never was motivated. I dropped out of college. I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to work, nothing. Um, it's even funny that I thought of doing this trip. It wasn't like me. But um, now that I get up every single morning and go for a 20 mile walk, um, I'm constantly outside. You can see as my sunglass tan, you know, I, I'm constantly outside. Um, getting fresh air. Um, I'm not eating the greatest, but I'm certainly eating a lot better than I was back at home. It makes the biggest difference in the world. I can now get under a six minute mile just from walking. I haven't ran at all. I'm not even working out, just walking. Um, it does wonders. I, I wake up actually feeling pretty good every day. And um, before this trip, I couldn't have said that. So I encourage you to um, get up, walk around maybe, go for a run. Doesn't have to be a long one, maybe a short jog. You know, just do something and I promise you, it will make a big difference. It'll help with your schoolwork. It'll help with everything. It's important. Stay fit. Live strong. Tiger.